against the wall. We're still going to do it because it's our barn. And that's who we are. Do you know what I mean? I think that's why... I get, I get, I get the narrative of Belfast and denying them their Grand Slam. I think that's interesting. But in terms of a script which would need that energy and that passion and that... Ugh, there's not a single person who wasn't wearing black and gold, I don't think, who wouldn't be cheering on Guildford. I can't think of a fan base who would be like, yeah, I want Nottingham to do well here. Do you see what I mean? Is the only way you could really swing the neutrals towards the Panthers against the Giants would be if the Giants won their semi-final and properly gooned it up and had some really dodgy refereeing calls and there was a, a really questionable goal and for some reason we couldn't review it and nobody thinks it's fair that Belfast are in the final. No, you don't deserve to be here. I'm not going to cheer for you. No, I, th- I think... I think... Honestly, I think Belfast Nottingham would be a really in. I think the best one for the neutral is is a combination probably of Belfast Car- Cardiff. I think that's the best final for the neutral because let's see who the best team is. Great, but I think Belfast Nottingham it's it's the best game for the non plus neutral. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? I'm not. I'm going to be like, oh, Nottingham one, great. Oh, Belfast one, great. It's a better game for TV than the fans in the arena. Uh, yeah, agreed. Because those fans, again, I don't think a lot of them are going to be rushing to Nottingham's side because, the because well, I'd rather cheer on Belfast. But then I'm also not going to cheer on Belfast because they're going to win a Grand Slam. And that'd be interesting to see. But also, they've also won the league. Oh, and, and they've beaten everybody. Do you know what I mean? It's like, who's the, who's the underdog there? Well, you'd think it'd be Nottingham, but not in their own barn. They, they, can't, they can't be almost. Does that make sense? So I, I think... It's why I would swing towards them playing Guildford. Just for that. Just for those opening moments and that opening noise, really. You know what I mean? What sort of game do they have to win, then? It's another slugfest. And that's even the reason why I like Guildford. It has to... I think both... This is where... This is, by the way, this is where they win the playoffs. 1-0, 1-0. But I think both their wins will have to be slugfests. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I think both of their wins are going to have to be slugfests. Just coming out the corner, swinging with both fists, lots of goals. And against Guildford, that's a bit more imaginable. That you catch Guildford at their electric best going forward and stone legs going back, you know. And I think it would be end-to-end, it would be thrilling. It might go to overtime. I don't think it is. I think they just pull out towards the end and they just get it done. Who deserves to be an overtime hero? For Nottingham, I mean, I like Farmer. <laughs> I think, I think if that's the, if that's. The, I mean, we're always going to be soft on the Brits, aren't we? We're always going to say, you know, do we need a redemption story for someone who the Panthers fans have been on the back of? You know, could another Robert Lakovic overtime winner, eight years after the one against the Steelers, yeah, finally get a few Panthers fans off his back? Hmm. Okay. In almost like the Jason Hewitt in the uh, twenty twenty Cup. Where I, I, I was, I was downright mean to Jason during that tournament. I thought he was awful, <laughs> and uh, oh, got the game winner. Oh, I fine, <laughs> you know. Do we need the sort of a, a passing of the torch moment? Do we want one of the Panthers youngsters to play a big part? You know, it, it's time for the Panthers' new era. With change of coach. Mm. We need this is the start of something else. We're gonna. No, I think I think you got to typify the Strachan era. Rather than anything else, do you see what I mean? You come, you come in to a ship that's not doing as well as it can. So you, you patch it up, and then, you, like I say, you just can't swing it. Now, out of all of these, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you the final question. All of these are hypotheticals, but they're all being shown in the, in in movies today. In 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 a, in a theater near you, you can go watch any four of the scripts we've created. Which one would you like? I quite like a script where Belfast just come up short. <laughs> I think like the way you went for the uh, posit- like the negative angle of the story no, rather I than just, the positive. I just think sometimes films with happy endings, ah, oh, it's a bit too obvious. But the one where you're not sure whether it's going to be a happy ending or not, and then, oh, actually it wasn't. It made you think. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that would make for a 
okay. a good a good scenario in that no one came away from the double overtime 2017 playoff final thinking, well, Sheffield are obviously better than Cardiff. No, no, Cardiff were the league's best team that year. Yeah. They just lost one game to Sheffield in double overtime. Yeah. No one's going to go away from this season thinking that Belfast haven't been a good side. Mm. But do they deserve to be the Grand Slam team of all Grand Slam teams? I'm not so sure. I think it might be nice if Cardiff just pit them. So that team. Yeah. I'm going I, to... I don't think Belfast deserve what Cardiff couldn't have a couple of years ago. I like underdog stories. And I wouldn't mind in Nottingham one in the way I just described, because that'd be a fun weekend. Wouldn't that be a fun weekend? Just you know. Lots what percentage of the crowd though come away happy with a Nottingham win compared to what percentage come away happy with oh, a we're, Guildford win? We're, we're... Now, which is why I'm leaning towards Guildford, because my personal narrative likes that Guildford story. But also, what a story. Do you know what I mean? What a story. What a season they've had. I just think they deserve something. And just to do a Vipers and win it, I like that. That's it for another episode and for this series. If you've got any comments about the issues we discussed or suggestions for future hypotheticals, then tweet us at HockeyHypo and make sure you leave us a comment and a rating wherever you're listening from. On behalf of Stephen Dowson, this is Jonathan Fernley saying goodbye. See you in the playoffs.